Welcome to the Momnificent Podcast. This is the place where we help parents live a happy, healthy life with their kids. We're going to show you how to connect with your child and help them even in their most difficult moments as we hear from experts in the field. I'm your host, Dr. Karin Jakubowski, an international speaker, public school principal, and former struggling student. The Momnificent Podcast equips parents with science-based strategies to help you Live a happy, healthy life with your kids. Welcome. Okay, here's a thought for you this week that I'm practicing. After listening and watching to this guy, Daniel, Dr. Daniel Amen. Okay, he uh, scans brains and figures out, he can even see if and when Alzheimer's is like coming down our path in our future. And something I learned this week about being in a sauna that helps decrease Alzheimer's never heard of that before. Anyway, with my interview with Shannon, it reminded me of something he said that I'm asking myself when I go to eat something this week, do I love this? And does it love me back? I think that's a really great question. He poses, does this food love me back? Does this drink love me back? Is that that healthy for me for in my future to have my mental health and wealth in my mental state, in my body, physically, emotionally, spiritually, socially, and Hey, maybe that question this week will help you think about twice about what you put in your body. Cause if you're like me, sometimes I just go and grab something. And then later I'm like, well, that wasn't so great for me. Uh, so does it love me? And is it loving me back? Hmm, that's going to help me choose. Help me. I'm not going to say it's been perfect. Help me. <laughs> maybe that'll help inspire you this week. Well, Shannon, welcome to Momnificent. I'm so excited about our talk today. And first, can you share with our guests where you're enjoying Momnificent from? Yes, I live in Indiana with my husband and four kids. And thank you so much for having me. I forgot that part. Um, Really excited to be here and just chat. I'm so excited too. And so are you close to uh, Purdue University? I've been there once. No. No? Okay. (laughs) My husband is an IU grad, so... Um, we are right outside Indianapolis. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's still kind of cold there, right? Well, actually right now it's 80 degrees oh. today, but it was thirties okay. a few days ago. So this is, that's cool. really warm, right? That's like middle of the summer. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So I'm so excited to have you here today and I love asking this question of my guests. So what's one thing you've done recently that you might not have done for a while that just brings you joy? Well, let's see. Your birthday only comes around once a year. So I haven't done that in a while. And I just recently had a birthday and my kids put on And I feel like later in life, as I get older, all I want to do on my birthday is feel special and loved. And my kids did a really good job this year, just surprising me with the sweetest surprise. And it just filled me up so much. So that was super joyful. That is so sweet. Well, here's what I do on my birthday because I'm an elementary principal, right? And it's this thought where like, is anybody going to remember my birthday? And instead of thinking like, Oh, I hope someone remembers because it's I'm like you, like, I just want to like feel known as special, like something little. Right. So I end up sometimes making like cupcakes for my staff so that I show up like with the party and then I never have to deal with the is anybody going to celebrate me? And uh, it's like a fun trick. And they always laugh because they're like, I can't believe you're making us cupcakes on your birthday. And I'm like, but it's so fun and you're so happy and I'm so happy. And then like it's almost. Yeah, it's just a funny thing. (laughs) I realized. And I do. And then it's just a party either way. And then I'm not dealing with the thoughts of like, oh, maybe or maybe not, whatever. Uh, Okay, so you're a mom of four. And I was curious, did you always want to have kids? Like, how did how did that happen? Yes, I'm actually one of five children myself. And so it was just my dream to always be a mom when you're asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? It was a mom. I didn't think anything else. It wasn't like, I want to be a nurse or a teacher, or it was just, I want to be a mom. And thankfully my dream came true. So, um, cause obviously sometimes that doesn't come to be for some people, but I was very blessed. So. And did your mom stay home with you when you were growing up or how was, did that kind of shape and impact that as well? Yeah, she, 
um, did both. She stayed home some and she also worked at our school. Um, in elementary school, she would be like the recess teacher or the lunch lady, or um, now she does boys and girls before and after care. So she's always involved in the school. And that definitely did because I was like, well, I could be a nurse and then be a school nurse as soon as my kids go to school. So it was always to be a mom first and then have something else to add into that. Did you go to nursing before kids or were you a nurse before kids? Yes, I was a nurse, um, active nurse for probably nine years before kids. And then, and then you kind of stopped that because you, you had your kids full time. Is that right? Yeah. So after my second was born, the nursing lifestyle just wasn't fitting in anymore. Circumstances changed. I had an amazing job in California. Circumstances changed where I couldn't find that same thing here in Indiana. And so I did put it on the back burner and I was like, you know, maybe I'll be a school nurse one day. Maybe it, it'll come in my life some other way at some point, but right now I'm just gonna be a mom. And so I turned into a stay-at-home mom for a good six years. And then, uh, so after being on the pregnancy roller coaster, as you put it, for years, I love that phrase, you were anxious to get off and just like take control of your health again. And because you had been a nurse, you were invited to try and provide feedback for a clinical product for fat, fat loss. How were you able to lose the fat and build that muscle? Yeah, well, exactly. I was on that roller coaster for a long time and I did not, I knew our fourth was our final and I did not want to take a year to lose that baby weight again. It was just wasn't something I was looking forward to. I had always had kind of a healthy lifestyle, diet, exercise was something I loved, but it still took a year to lose baby weight. Um, it's nine months to put it on and so it, it makes sense but I wanted something. And at the same time, I was presented with a clinical product. Being that I was a nurse, a friend knew that I might really be interested in it and had tons of science and clinical research behind it. And it is a product that essentially helps you lose fat and build muscle. So the product in itself is what does that. And it's the first in the world combination of these two ingredients to cause that. So it's patented collagen paired with a clinical grade conjugated linoleic acid, so CLA. And those two together help you burn fat, build muscle and smooth, tighten your skin and provide amazing energy. So I started taking the product and I loved my results and fell in love with the whole, the whole Thing of it, the product, the results, how I was feeling, and just that I was able to lose all that baby weight in 16 weeks. And so definitely beat a year and I was happy about that. So instead of a year, what was the results or the time frame? 16 weeks, I lost all the baby weight. How many? And from there. I Wait, what did you say? 16 weeks? Yeah, 16 weeks. Four months? Yeah. From a year to four months? Yes. That's amazing. Only thing I changed and mind you, Stop. COVID. So we're not running around places. We're sitting at home. <laughs> oh my gosh. Actually, the gym was the only place I was able to go. Um, but yes, I. Hey there, it's Karn. I hope that you're enjoying the show. And by the way, if you're a mom who wants to learn how to help your child when they're struggling behaviorally or facing challenges in school, Get started today by getting my free short video course, Three Steps to Happy Healthy Kids at www.educationalimpactacademy.com forward slash free video. If you're new here or you haven't done this yet, this is definitely the first step to get started in learning how to have a happy, healthy life with your kids. So head on over to www.educationalimpactacademy.com forward slash free video and grab your free gift today. So... Yeah, go ahead. I have so many questions now. <laughs> Is that the one that I keep seeing on Facebook that I was like, I'm going to ask you about this. Like, what the heck? You look great. And I want to see this and tell me more. Is that the one? It is the one. It That's is the one. <laughs> and then how often do you take it? Or do you take it based on, is there like a standard for taking it? Or do you have to be prescribed how often to take it? One tablespoon a day. 
It is um, a delicious tablespoon that you want to drink the whole bottle. So it's hard to restrict (laughs) the tablespoon, but that's all it is. And it's because the clinical dose of the CLA, if you take more than that, it is not going to do anything. You're actually going to extract it by urine. So it's not, it's not going to be worth anything to take more than that. The collagen, you can take as much collagen as you want because it's all natural. It's exactly the same collagen that's in our body. That's how it's patented. Um, and so you can take as much as that as you want. So we have different forms of that, but the CLA is the one that you should only take that, that dose. So. And how old were you after you had your last child? Oh, that's a good question because let me think. Well, he just turned two and I just turned 38. So I was 36. Okay. Yeah. Because as we age, as women age, right, it, it, our metabolism slows down and it's going to be harder for us to kind of maintain or keep off that weight, right? Exactly. After that third child, actually, I noticed that big. I So I had all my kids two years apart. So after the third one, I guess I was 34 and it I never actually lost all the baby weight and got back to my starting point. And I was like, well, I'm just going to have another one. So let's just (laughs) wait. And so I, you know, I didn't start any clinical product or anything after that baby, but it was this one that I was like, okay, let's do something. Let's invest in some way. And, and how did you know you weren't going to have a fifth child? How did you know fourth was it? (laughs) Because I'm curious. Well, exactly. I mean, God has his own plans, but we, my husband did have procedure during pregnancy. I was like, I don't want to go through this again. If I mean, (laughs) something happens with this pregnancy, God forbid, but um, yeah, we had him have a surgery. You were happy and you were like, this is great. I love it. I'm good. Okay. Okay. Um, so back to women aging, cause I'm 43. So I know my metabolism is going to start slow down or already has started slowing down more than normal. Can you tell me more about collagen? Like what is important about it? Why do we need to take it? What, like what's happening there? I know I've heard a little bit, you know, here and there, but maybe you can help me understand it a little bit more. Yeah. So collagen is the most abundant protein in our body. So it is all throughout our skin, our hair, our nails, our joints, our connective tissue is all made up of collagen. And sadly, after in our 20s, our mid 20s, we just start losing it. We lose a percentage every year. We can't do anything to control it except, and that's the aging process. But the thing that we can do to control it is to put it back in our body. So this collagen actually is not just collagen. It's collagen hyaluronic acid and conjointin sulfate matrix technology is the full name all together. And so it is patented again, seven patents. So that is one of the patents is that it is this combination of all these things and the, it is a single source. So it does not have a bunch of fillers or junk in it. It is just collagen to put back in our bodies. And it so naturally mimics what's in our body that our body recognizes it and then uses it. So oh, it doesn't awesome. say, oh, this is some foreign thing you're putting into me. It actually says, oh, I know this stuff. This is collagen. I already have it. Now I'm going to use what you put in. The crazy part is it because it's so natural, it uses what we put in. And then it also says, I'm going to make more collagen. Wow. It stimulates the cells to make more collagen. So we literally are turning the time, the anti, the aging clock back by putting this collagen in. So yes, collagen is a buzzword. It is something you need, but you need to make sure it's the right one because we don't want to just be putting something in our body to, you know, for one, waste money by putting some the wrong stuff in. This is, um, you know, is so much more effective after just 28 days, it's going to increase that hyaluronic acid by 6,000%. Holy moly. Even if we don't, maybe like, maybe you have a wrinkle and you're like, oh, I want to get rid of this wrinkle. You might not see that go away in 28 days. You might, but inside your body is using all that collagen and inside you are, it's being distributed 6,000% worth. So that's crazy. Okay. So collagen does what exactly? Well, 
it helps lubricate the joints. So it's that connective tissue that holds everything together. <laughs> so your skin, so it's going to tighten your skin, firm your skin. Think of a baby, a baby has a ton of collagen because, and their skin is soft and smooth and tight. They don't have wrinkles. Your hair is all made up of collagen. Your um, joints, again, have that collagen in between your joints. So it's gonna lubricate, make them work better, move better. Um, when you like, I've seen people that have hands that are all crippled up and then their hands are able to open because the collagen is going in between those joints and making them just able to move. It takes Is that, is that what helps against arthritis or not really? Yes. It helps. Oh with my gosh. Um, and well, where does the fat burn come in? Is that another, okay. another product in the collagen specifically from this patented product? So the multi-patented collagen is, comes in different forms. So different versions. And so the one product that helped me lose fat is a product that has CLA in it. So it's paired, the collagen is paired with the CLA. You can take the collagen straight on a tablespoon and that's just a liquid, like a little juice. And you would just take one tablespoon, two tablespoons of that. Um, we also have like a foam. So it comes in a version of a body firming foam to literally tighten skin, reduce cellulite, um, smooth skin, and provide all that hyaluronic acid, which is another buzzword. We hear that in all skincare types. Well, this is hyaluronic acid that actually works. And so we put that all over our body. <laughs> okay. We have it in our skincare, skincare system as well. So all right. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. So full question. So what happens if women, as we age, we don't supplement with collagen? What are the effects of that? What will we look like? What will, what will we be like if we don't? Supplement? Yeah. Well, all bodies are different as we know. And so some people, you know, they really struggle with hair loss. They start balding, their hair gets really thin and brittle. So some people specifically come to me for collagen just for hair growth. They're not worried about wrinkles. Maybe they don't even have wrinkles yet, but their hair is going. Um, some people really have a lot of wrinkles and they age in their face and you can see it. Um, other people, again, age with their joints and arthritis. I don't struggle with arthritis, but I know a lot of people, even in their thirties who do just from lifting weights, or it depends what your life experiences are, I think, and your genetics as to what symptom you age with first that you're going to notice. So we just want to feel well. So maybe like, maybe you do have some hair loss and that's an aging thing for you, but you also have the joints. So you're going to be more concerned with achy joints than you are about your hair, because that's, that's just for you, that's more important. And so it just depends on the body and the genetics and how we age, but obviously we all age every day. Yes. And we're not going backwards. <laughs> So Shannon, how would, what, what's, what the first thing or someone listening right now, what's something you would say to take control of your health? Like right now, what, what would you say? Well, I think the way that I can help someone take back control of their health is by sharing what worked for me. So I, that's what I decided to do in 2020 fourth baby. I decided to level up my self-care and, and say, I'm no longer going to let pregnancy and postpartum take control, but I'm going to have control and I'm going to put back into my body things that are good for it and things that are going to help me feel my best and live my best. And so I, again, take health and wellness supplements because I'm aging and I need those to put good things back in. I pay attention to my diet and moving my body and my mental health. So I believe in whole body wellness and self-care and the way that I've been able to do that, I can share with others and help them see what my experience has been and how it can help them. And I believe that it will. So just sharing that and encouraging that with other pe to other people um, is a way that I can help them learn that they have one body and we only have one life. And so we got to take care of it. It reminds me of something I heard this week. I started following a Dr. Daniel Amen, who studies your brain and brain scans and has whole protocols around that. And he said something that reminded me from what you said. Uh, love your food, 
but choose the food that loves you back. And he's like, every time you go to eat something or drink something, ask yourself, do I love this, but is it also loving me back? Because we can love a ton of things, but it is not loving us back and it is doing a lot of harm more than we realize. I mean, oh my gosh, it is just really... So like what you said, I was like, yes, that's it. That's like the questions I've been asking myself this week. So Shannon, you also mentioned, I know we had talked on our pre-call about your last pregnancy and it helped you find your mission in life. And you faced something during that last pregnancy that you hadn't experienced with the previous three. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? Yeah. So as we know, pregnancy comes with a lot of challenges and symptoms and I had not experienced this with my other three, but I had extreme anxiety um, during and post, but during, and um, it was unexplained. There was no reason for it. The baby was doing great. I had no life circumstances at the time to cause anxiety. Um, so I, you know, tried to talk to God, talk to my husband, talk to my doctor. Those were things that helped me. And then, but what, what, what anxiety can you, what was that like for you? What were you thinking, feeling, what was happening? Like, can you describe that? Cause I think someone listening, maybe they're experiencing this and they're like, oh man, thank God there's someone else. I'm not alone. Right. And I, I had interviewed another lady who went through this as well. And she's a doctor also, and she couldn't believe she was going through it. And then once she started telling her story, people were like, oh my gosh, thank you. Like, because you just feel like what the heck is this? I haven't experienced it before. And I went through the same thing. What, so what did it sound look like for you? Yeah. And I love that because that's what I think why we go through things is so that we can on the other side, share them with people and help others. So I love that. And I was having, it just felt like a pressure in my chest and I was having heart palpitations actually during pregnancy, went to a cardiologist because it was nothing that I had felt before. It was a real irregular heartbeat. It was um, just this underlying something's wrong. Something's going to happen that's wrong. Something is going to, I didn't know if it had to do with the baby, his life. Um, I just felt like something was going to happen. And, you know, you know, those people that are um, worst case scenarios, they are always thinking of, the worst thing that could happen in any situation. I'm not usually like that. So for some reason though, I had a healthy baby. We had the ultrasounds and all of that, but I felt like something wrong was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, after getting my heart checked out and everything was fine, that did calm it a little bit because I was like, well, is something going to happen to my body is my, my heart, you know, something's wrong with me. And, um, I was able to, fight that by, you know, getting checked out. So when you feel something, getting it looked at and getting it, um, some expert advice on the situation always helps. And, um, yeah, so there was no, there was no explanation and I just had to, um, talking helped. So getting out, even just saying to someone, I don't know why I feel this way. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm thinking worst case scenario or that something terrible is about to happen. But um, I didn't have any, I didn't have any major anxiety attacks or panic attacks during pregnancy. It was just a weight, like a pressure that um, there were times that my heart and my breath just felt like like those are the physical symptoms, like something, something bad is happening, but that would calm down in just, you know, a few minutes by talking it out. It would happen a lot at night while I'm trying to sleep. I would wake up and feel that I would pray, try to fall back to sleep. Um, but yeah, those were the physical things that I went through. And then there was something through all this that helped you find your mission and how, how did that transpire? Yeah. So I, you know, during all of it, I prayed for peace. I was like, I just want the opposite of anxiety is peace. And I knew that's what I needed. Um, and I prayed for that. And then quarantine came because we brought our baby home on March 11th, 2020. So, you know, the world was anything but peaceful. There was a lot of chaos, even in my home, having four kids now, 
two that I had to homeschool all of a sudden, a two-year-old and a newborn, it did not feel peaceful, but actually focusing on that and praying for that, I had extreme peace. And this was, you know, the accumulation of the whole pregnancy and then coming home where I thought this was where I was going to find the most anxiety. I actually think a lot of my anxiety pre was because of the post. Like I was dreading the post and I had no idea COVID was coming. No one did. So I, but yes, it was crazy. Despite all of that, I had extreme peace and very sadly, we did have a family tragedy. My sister unexpectedly passed away and I had extreme peace through that too, which was mind boggling. I mean, she was only 42. It was not something that you would feel peace about. Um, but I did. And I, I just felt like it was my mission at that point, because a few shortly after that, this opportunity of sharing my story and being a nurse and helping people with their health and wellness and whole body wellness came across my path and I can use that story and help others find peace and purpose through their circumstances and their through their trials and um, help just by sharing my story and sharing what worked for me and how I found that peace and I just feel that by sharing your story is helping someone. And if my story is a story of peace and purpose, that can help so many people and, and moms. And so I just want to do that and make that my mission to help others find that. That is so awesome. And Simone Knego, I interviewed her. She wrote this book, The, the Unordinary Extraordinary You. And she's like, Karen, everybody has a story. And you might think you're so ordinary, but yet in that ordinariness, it is extraordinary to someone else. And I love the whole podcast world because I'll find myself listening to an episode on a podcast and I don't know, maybe because they're, you know, they say, you know, that you have them right in your ear. So it's almost like you're sitting down with the person and I'll just find myself smiling because I'm like, yes. And I'll like totally relate to what they're going through. And it just encouraged me or inspires me or just, you know, gives me a little boost. And I know when we were talking at our initial calls, I was like so excited because I'm like, Shannon, yes, you do. You have something to share with the world. <laughs> you helped me to see that so much. Oh my gosh. So I just love it. And and it does, it, it, it will inspire and it does inspire. I mean, I will look at your Facebook post, come on. And I get inspired. <laughs> <laughs> so see, I love it. All right. So as we finish out, um, what is one lesson you're learning right now in motherhood that we can listen and be inspired as a takeaway with? Yeah. So, um, this might be a longer story, but, um, I have been learning a lot about, you know, what we are and our habits and our lifestyle and our challenges and our setbacks, they're going to impact our children. And we can also not only take control of our health, but we can take control of that. And we can be mindful of what we're passing on. And, you know, I was shown that shyness was being passed on to me and I was passing it on to my children. And it was, you know, revealed to me through prayer that that's not a quality that I should um, not not be proud of, but I think we're called to be bold and courageous and strong and brave. You don't hear, you should be shy. That's a good thing to be like, go for right. it. Yeah. You hear, be brave, be courageous. Step- Confident bold. Yes. yes. And w- and when people show up like that, it's like wow, look at them. That is that, that it is what catches your attention, draws you in, etc. Yes, it's impactful to someone else. You're not really impacting someone when you're shy. You're actually closing inward. Whether that's for shame or guilt or um your own experience, whatever's going on inside of you, but no one else knows. It's all inside and you're 
I mean, it was just something that was passed on and I was not okay with being that way. I didn't want to be called that. I didn't want to, to call my children that any longer. And so that was something that I was working on and I, I do this word of the year thing and I ask God to show me my word of the year and what I'm going to focus on this year. And it was bold. And I was like, okay, well, all right. So I see a trend here. And then days later, my daughter, my oldest daughter, because this was the beginning of the year, she went to school and they wrote down their well wishes for 2022. And she wrote, be more courageous. And her sweet teacher texted it to me and said, look what your daughter wrote. And I was like, oh my gosh, well, who was going to teach her to be more courageous but me? Like, right. she wants this in her life. I have to teach that to her. Oh. The next day, I was listening to one of my tried and true podcasts that I tune into, and she's also an author. And she said, she actually wrote a book, 100 Days to Brave. <laughs> but that day, she announced that she wrote 100 Days to Brave for kids. Yes. Ah, and you told me about it and I've told parents about it and I've got two, I've got two parents reading it as of a week ago. This is so cool. Okay. Sorry. I just, I'm so excited. Yeah. And she was, she challenged, she actually doesn't have kids of herself, but she has a lot of little ones in her life. And she challenged you to grab these two books and to go through them with your child or little one in your life. And I was like, okay, well, yes, I'm going to do that. So we've been doing that since February. It's been amazing. And I, my young, my youngest daughter, so I have a nine and seven. So my seven-year-old is actually the one that I speak, or a lot of people speak shyness over her most. She's very quiet and timid. And we say, like, if someone asks her a question or even just says hi, and she doesn't respond, I'm like, oh, she's just really shy. I'm sorry. She, you know. And I told her, I was like, when we started that book, I said, no longer, I'm no longer calling you shy. I don't think that's what God's calling us to be. I think he's calling us to be brave and bold and courageous. And we're going to learn together how to be that because I struggle with that too. So we're going to be that with each other and for each other and help each other to conquer this together. And so I'm not calling you that. I'm calling you a brave woman of God. And that's what you're going to be. That is so awesome. Oh my gosh. I know. I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay. So uh, before that, we could just keep talking and talking because I just love talking with you and we'll have to have you back on this show. And then one day I know you're going to probably have your own podcast. So I'll be a guest <laughs> on your show too. How? today? So. <laughs> How? That'll be next year. Maybe that's next year's goal that God's going to bring. <laughs> bring your way. How can someone find and follow you um, and also uh, hear more about the products that you were mentioning? Because I know I'm going to look at them as soon as we get off this call. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, mostly on the Instagram at Shan Wright 56, Shan Wright 56. And then on Facebook, Shannon Wright. Um, so you can follow me from Instagram to Facebook because I know Facebook, it's kind of hard to find people. Um, and then um I'm also on TikTok too. So I have all my resources mostly on Instagram and then you can find me in the other places. Oh my gosh, I love it. Shannon, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for sharing your story. Thanks for being you and just showing up and being you. Thank you. I so appreciate you having me on. I really have gotten to know you well and it's been so fun. Well, that's all we've got for this episode of the Momnificent Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would be honored if you would subscribe and rate if you really liked it. I know wherever you're listening right now, it might not be the best time to leave a comment, but feel free to leave a question, a review, or a comment at any time. And until next time, remember, don't worry, be happy.